Good morning, Cedar Grove. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning to each one of you, my father's children. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and especially today we should be exceedingly glad and enjoy it and rejoice in it. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to get started. The Lord is in his holy temple, and all the earth keeps silent. I would rather be a door people in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents with wicked men. Amen. We're going to have a scripture reading by Deacon Patterson, followed by a prayer uh, by Deacon McNair, and then Sister Brown will come with a song, and then we'll come with the word. Anybody? Amen? Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Good morning. For our scripture this morning, we'll be coming from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 9. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, there came unto the spelter, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the spelter. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and they returned to the spelter, and returned from the spelter, and told all these things unto the, unto the eleven and all the rest. I've read from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 9. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let us go to God in prayer. God, our Father, is real grateful and humble hearts that we do bow in your presence this morning. We say thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to be in the midst of brothers and sisters in a different setting. You are God, and besides you, there is none other. And we are grateful this morning, Father God, that even in this pandemic, Father God, you have made ways for us to stay in communication with you and with each other. And we are grateful this Easter Sunday morning that Jesus conquered death. And for those of us who fight, we know that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So this morning we just lift you up because Father God don't make no difference what we're going through or what situation that we're facing. We know that in you, Father God, we can do all things but faith. So just look down on it this morning, Father God, with your eyes of mercy and your hand of pity. And just grant it to us what we stand in need of this morning. We worship you on this day because the Lord has risen. And that we know that there's a resurrection for our soul. Yeah. So just be with us. Use our prophecy to your name, honor, and glory. Yeah. That someone might receive a word on today. And when we come down for this man of privilege, help us, Father God, to take inventory. To know that even in this pandemic, we can work on our personal relationship with you. And that when we do come back together, we can come together, Father God, with a testimony of how good you have been. For you are in control of all things. It's in the name of Jesus we give you praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Amen.
So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I can be free So I can be So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I can be free So I can be whole And I can tell everyone I know So you clean me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrifice your life So I can be free So I can be whole And I can tell everyone I know Amen. To God be the glory. Come on and give the Lord some praise. Come on and give the Lord some praise. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. For truly he's worthy of all our praise. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Amen. We honor our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. To the deacons and trustees here at Cedar Grove. To the members. To our musicians. We certainly honor my wife. I thank her for her love and her support. And to each one of you, my father's children. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we should be exceedingly glad in it. Amen. We welcome you to this Easter, this Easter service. Amen. Amen. Truly, the Lord is worthy. Amen. Bear with them trying to get set up here and trying to battle this wind at the same time. Amen. Amen. Those of you who have your Bibles or your Bible devices, amen. If you would go with me, uh, there's two passages of Scripture I want to look at. Two passages of Scripture. The first one is Philippians 10. Amen. Philippians 10. I'm sorry, Philippians 3, verse 10. And then Luke 18, verse 33. Amen. Let's look. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. And then Luke 18 and 33. Amen. 
10th verse of Philippians chapter 3. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. Then Luke chapter 18, verse 33. And they shall scorn him and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to declare thy holy and eternal word. I would, kind Father, that you would grant me mental and physical strength. I may treat, preach a gospel of season with your Holy Ghost. Hide me behind the cross and let the blood of Jesus prevail. You said, if I go, you go with me. Open my mouth and you speak for me. You found me here now in your word. Consecrate me now for thy service divine. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight for you, my strength. And you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Out of that, of those two passages, once you preach from the subject, it's rejoicing time. It's rejoicing time. My Christian friends, on last week, last week was considered Passion Week. Started with last Sunday as Palm Sunday. We traditionally remember the Lord's triumph entry into Jerusalem. And let's briefly review the events of last week. Sunday. This was a day of mosaic presentation. The day of God's entry when, in accordance to the Old Testament prophecy, he openly declared himself as the son of David, the king. But not the regal king the Jews were looking for or warning. He came as a lowly and suffering uh, king, riding in on the form of an ass, or as therefore by the prophet told in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And then on Monday, this day was Mosaic power. Two things occurred that demonstrated his authority and power as king. In one, he cursed the fig tree. In the other, he cleansed the temple for the second time. As the Lord made the two-mile journey, he cursed a fig tree that was full of leaves. It gave the appearance of fruitfulness. It was barren of fruit of figs and basically useless. The fig tree served as an emblem of Jewish nation of the Jewish nation. As this act was cursing, the tree served as a symbol of Christ's rejection of barren Israel. On this day, the Lord proceeded to the city and entered the temple. Some three years later before he cleansed the temple in John 2, 13 through 16. That corruption now had returned and the temple again was a place of merchandise. So again, Jesus drove out the money changers. In this act, the Lord was demonstrating his authority over the temple and the religious life of the nation. Tuesday, this day was Mosaic Polyphonic, a day of challenge and comfort controversy from religious crowds and who acted to his authority. On this day, he taught in parables. He solemnly denounced the religious leaders as blind guides and hypocrites. After leaving that afternoon, Christ sat at the Mount of Olives and gave the Olivet Discourse concerning the destruction of Jerusalem and the end times. On this day also, the rulers were plotting his death. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, these days were of Mosaic preparation. A large public ministry was over, and he was further preparing his disciples for his death for, in, for carrying on in his absence. Wednesday was probably a day of rest in Bethany. Thursday, he sent two disciples in the city to prepare for the Passover. Friday, at sunset, he ate the Passover with his disciples, instituted the Lord's Supper, washed the disciples' feet, gave the upper room discourses of John 13 and 14, gave the discourses of the way to the Gethsemane in John 15 and 16, prayed the high, the high priestly prayer in John 17, and agonize in the garden. Later that afternoon, or later that evening, he will be betrayed with the kiss. 
apprehended, tried before the Jews and the Romans, before Ananias, Caiaphas, before Pilate, Herod, and before Pilate again, was then condemned and crucified. So here we are on Easter Sunday. Here we are on Resurrection Sunday. Somebody shout, it's rejoicing time. As Christians, the resurrection of Christ, it stirs our spirit, renews our faith, our faith in God and in ourselves. The Easter story wrapped in its trappings of personal failure, tragic defeat, and ultimate success it stares us when we see how Christ overcomes and rises above what even his best disciples thought was fair. Come on, somebody. We're inspired. We're inspired because his resurrection gives us encouragement to handle similar failures with an air of hope. Because he was successful despite apparent failure. We who follow him can also expect to triumph trying over our failure and our defeat. My Christian friends, it's a pretty good reason to celebrate. Somebody shout again, it's rejoicing time. This text, this text considers Christ as he makes a prophecy about the remainder of his life. He notes that he would be delivered into the hands of Gentiles, ridiculed, scorned, and put to death. But he would rise again. The disciples who heard, heard him as he talked about his coming troubled them and they were confused. Verse 34 indicates that the true meaning of Jesus' statement were hidden from them until the proper time. When Paul wrote to the Philippians in chapter 3 verse 10, he says his desire was to know him, to know Christ, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Y'all get that part? The fellowship of his suffering. Does your Bible read the same? But watch this. Watch this. The great inspiration of every Christian, it comes when we read the through three truths of this text backwards. Oh, y'all looking at me funny. Read it in reverse. Read what Paul said in reverse. The reverse order, what Paul says first was, like Christ, we have died to this world and sinned through baptism and shared his experience. Since baptism and immersion of this new life, we have suffered in many ways. The third thing was, these things serve as reminders to us that since we have been buried with him in baptism, suffered with him through sacrificial living, that we can also expect to share in the power of the resurrection. Come on, somebody. In short, every Christian should be inspired since the one we serve has endured and conquered defeat. We who are, we who are recipients of the same power, we can receive it with, it with the same respect. Somebody shout, it's rejoicing time. Church, an account of the life of Christ that ends with the crucifixion is not incomplete. Ending at Calvary focused on what appears to be the failure or the low point. The beauty of the Christian experience is both the agony of, the, of Calvary and the ecstasy of resurrection morning. One talks about the failures and shortcomings of mankind and others focus on mankind's triumph over his own iniquities. How do you, how do you assess your life? How do you assess your life at this point? Are you a winner or are you a loser? Can I preach this thing? There are many today who feel the world has crucified them and burdened them with, with, with crosses to heaven to bear. Some have stumbled under the Lord, under the load and marriages have crumbled. Businesses have failed, friendships have dissolved, and hope for the future has been dissipated. Y'all right. seeing this thing? Some are not excelling as they should, while others seem to be at a standstill. Some see themselves as the victims of a terrible knockout punch, 
and they're down for the eight count. How do you how do we keep going when it seems so obvious that everyone around us or everyone around you have have, have trying to defeat you? Washed up. Come on, somebody. Church, how you access yourself depends on how you are connected with God. Can I preach this thing? Those who have been baptized in the faith expect to encounter a fairy of disappointments and setbacks as a part of life. I stopped by to inform somebody that setbacks and frustrations come with the territory of every Christian. Can I preach it like I feel it? Church, Christ suffered many setbacks. Christ suffered many disappointments. But he knew that that did not spell the end. I'm starting to feel this thing. While Calvin was part of the story, it was not the story. It simply came with the territory. It was necessary to provide redemption and salvation for men. If Jesus, I said if Jesus had to endure suffering, we who become like him should expect no less. I'm trying to, mm, the joy. Every Christian, I say the joy, every Christian shows at Easter is the reminder that through life, though life sometimes get us up and get us down, we shall overcome. Though we're frustrated by the circumstances beyond our control, we shall prevail. Though there are setbacks in pursuit of our goals, we shall eventually triumph. Though we'll fail on occasions, we are encouraged because our Savior triumphed over death. Our Savior triumphed over defeat. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout. I will. I will. I will rise again. Touch the world. Laughed at Christ. As he hung on that cross. He was counted among the failures. Sometimes it appears that we have failed as well. But every time we think of the resurrection of Christ. We should say to the world. It's rejoicing time. Well I got the clothes. And get y'all out of here. Church. The greatest man in history, his name is Jesus. Jesus had no son, yet they called him master. Jesus had no degrees, yet they called him teacher. Jesus had no medicine, yet they called him healer. Had no enemies, yet kings, they feared him. He won no military battles, yet he conquered the entire world. He committed no crime, yet they crucified him. He was buried in a tomb, but yet, yet, he lives. He lives. That's why I hope to triumph over defeat. Our hope is tied to the resurrection of Jesus. I got the clothes, but my soul is on fire. I believe he lives. I believe he lives. I know there's no battle he can't win. I know there's no burden he can't lift. I know there's no loneliness he can't comfort. King, but my soul is on fire. I know, I know, there's a promise that the Lord cannot keep. And because he lives, because he lives, you should know there's no dark cloud that the Lord can't brighten. You should know there's no headache that the Lord can't sue. That's why I believe the songwriter declared, because he lived, because he lived, I can face tomorrow, because he lived, 
on sin is gone. Because I know, I know who holds the future. I got the clothes, but my soul is on fire. And because he lived life, life is worth living because he lives. I know, I know he lives. Do you know that he lives? I'm glad. I'm glad that there was a Calvary. But I'm even happier to know that after Calvary, that there was a resurrection. Come on, somebody. Because of resurrection, I can rejoice. Because of resurrection, I can rejoice. I'm trying to close this thing, but my soul is on fire. I know you can't go touch somebody, but just look at somebody and wave your hand and say, I can rejoice. It's rejoicing time. Anybody know it's rejoicing time? Don't fool me now. Anybody know it's rejoicing time? Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's rejoicing time. It's rejoicing time. And see that you hit somebody right there. Because for somebody, you hadn't been in there over a year. For somebody, you hadn't been in there over a year. But God be the glory that he allowed you to be on the church ground. That's a shout right there. Can I preach this thing? For somebody, you didn't know that you were going to be here this morning. That's a shout right there. For somebody, for most of us, we want a part of that 500,000 that lost their life due to the virus. That's a shout right there. I'm trying to close this thing, Reverend Cousin, but my soul is on fire. Can I give you a reason to praise him? You got up this morning. Can I give you a reason to praise him? You were able to put your clothes on. Can I give you a reason to praise him? You have breath in your body. Somebody ought to open their mouth and shout. It's rejoicing time. For when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all, all he's done for me, something, something, something on the inside, something on the inside starts making his way on the outside. I thank God. I thank God for saving me. I'm trying to crawl, Deacon Mac, but my soul is on fire. You can tie my hands. You can remedy my feet. But don't you let me think. Hallelujah. Chief, I'm trying to let it go, but it won't let me go. It's rejoicing time. It's rejoicing time. See, this time last year, we didn't know where we were going to be. This time last year, we didn't know we were going to be alive. Come on, somebody. That's a shout right there. And if you don't want to shout, hold my mule. Because I can shout by myself. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You see, some of you think that stimulus check got you where you are today. Some of you think your good looks got you where you are today. But I got news for you, baby. Money will fade. Your beauty will fade. But the God I serve, the God I serve, I said the God I serve, he's good. He's good. He's good. Better than any money. He's good. Better than any clothes. He's good. 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 Come on, say.
said with me. He's good, 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 right by himself. I'm trying to close talking to you, but my soul is on fire. See, that's the Ajax. Y'all remember Ajax? Ajax would get out and spit many stains. Notice I said many. But God can get out all stains. Anybody out here? I said, anybody out here? You willing? Help me. Hold up. Hold up. That blood stain better. Hold up. That blood stain better. Hold it up. Hold it up. Because Jesus, 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 there's something about that name. Jesus, how sweet to call on him. You can call on him in the midnight hour. You can call on him in the noonday. You can call on him in the morning. Grandma said, he might not come when you want him, but God knows. God knows. God knows. He's on time. Anybody out here know he's an on time God? Anybody out here know that you know you know. That you know you know you know. That you know. That you know you know. Anybody on this side? Do you know? Anybody on this side? Do you know? Shout glory! Shout glory! Yeah! Hallelujah! 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 I'm trying to close. Come to my soul. This whole song. Can you do me just one, one favor? I want you to think of one thing. And I know you have many. Think of one thing prior to this day. Think of one thing prior to this day that you didn't think you were going to make it. You didn't think you were going to be here today. My baby's here. My niece is here, Shanita. And I know she don't mind if I testify in her place. Because this day, come on somebody. She's been a, a kidney transplant from my mother for like 17 years now. That's a praise right there. And not too long ago, the kidney started acting up. Somebody shout, but God. <laughs> Going back and forth to the doctor, the doctor told her she probably had to get another kidney. My daughter got tested. Didn't work out. Her husband got tested. It worked out. Went back to the doctor. Can I tell this thing? Went back to the doctor. The doctor said, baby, everything's doing fine. It looks like that kid is going to work out, and I don't see. I don't see. You need another kid? No time soon. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he? Won't he? Won't he? Won't he? Won't he? Won't he? Won't he do it? And see, that's just one thing. Now there's others out here, you can think of one thing. Been in the hospital, didn't know when you was gonna get out. Got out, had to go back to the hospital. Come on somebody, been in an accident. Didn't know, come on somebody, look at the vehicle. I'm not talking about me, somebody out there. Look at the vehicle, and looking at the vehicle, and look at yourself, you knew that it was nothing but God, I got the clothes, but my soul is on fire. Shout hallelujah. Now see, <laughs> the sun, not this sun, 
Y'all missed that. The song got me out in the food up here. And if I had time, I had time, there's enough parking lot that I can run around on. Because I don't know when it's the last time. I wish the next time that I get to run. Y'all missed that one. You don't know when the next time you might get the shot. You don't know when the next time you get to praise him. I... Well, for those of you who need some music to praise him, come on, fellas, give, give me some shot music. Give, give me some running music. Praise you, Lord. Glory. Come on, Lord, I had a clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. To God be the glory for his word. To God be the glory for his presence in our lives. Amen. Maybe someone here, maybe someone out there that don't know the Lord and the part in your sins. Today, on this Resurrection Sunday, you want to be an example of the resurrection, why he got up. Because he got up for your sins. He died, he was buried, but he got up for your sins. He got up so you may have the right to eternal life. If you find yourself here or out there, amen. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus died on the third day, which this day represents, you shall be saved. He's standing with open arms, waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Amen. If you find yourself there, you want to give your life to Christ. Say this simple prayer with me. Father, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. And I need to be saved. And only you can do what I need. So I confess. I believe. So here's my heart. Take it. Wash me. Make me clean. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer... Jesus coming to your life. He's your Savior. Now God's your Father. Now you have something to shout about. Now you have something to rejoice about. Amen. It's not prayer time. We cannot come assembly at the altar as we normally do. But here's what I want you to do. If you decide. If you want to get out of your car and stand by your car, that's fine. And those of you are standing to symbolize that you come to the altar, you want prayer. I right for you, I want you to take one or two steps forward. Take one or two steps forward. Then you're at the altar. Then you are at the altar. And God knows. He knows what you desire. He knows what you need. But you can tell him yourself. No, I can't come around and go to everyone like we used to do. But you can tell him yourself what you desire your prayer for. You can tell him yourself why you come to the altar. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a patient God. He's a good 
You see your brother, bless you. Bless you. So let us go to God in prayer. If you desire to stand outside your car, that's fine. If you desire to stand inside your car, that's fine too. Amen. But let us pray. Let us pray. As the others are getting outside and standing, bless you. Gracious God, our Father, the give of every good and perfect gift. Lord, first of all, thank you. Father, thank you for this day. Father, thank you for Resurrection Sunday. Thank you, Father, for getting up, for your son getting up. For Thank you for sending your son. Thank you. Now, Father, we ask forgiveness. We ask forgiveness. We ask forgiveness. Now, Father, there's those who are out there. As they took that step forward, as they got out of the vehicles, you know what's on their mind. You know what they need and desire prayer. You know the situation. You know the circumstance. You know all about them. You made them. You created them. Father, some are burdened in their hearts. Some are burdened in their spirits. Father, some are racking. That their bodies are racking with pain. Father, some are confused. Some are at a state of confusion. But you said, look unto you. So, Father, they come looking unto you. Father, they come praying unto you, pleading unto you. Have your own way. God, they trust in you. God, they believe in you. So, any way you bless them, they'll be satisfied. Father, heal that person that's sick. Heal that person that's racking with pain. Speak to that person's spirit that's at a state of confusion. They don't know whether to go left or to go right. Just you spoke to that prophet in that cave with a soft, still voice. Speak to them. Father, though some are standing in proxy for that someone may not be here. Their child may not be here. Their husband may be not here. Their husband may be in the hospital. That loved one is not here. They may stand in proxy for them. So, Father, they stand praying for them. If you'd be so kind to go to where they're asking you to go. Whether it's in the hospital, whether it's at home, whether it's in the rest, whether it's in the jail, so go where they're praying, Father, for that person that they're staying in proxy for. And Father, we're going to thank you. We're going to bless you. We're going to honor you and give you glory. In Jesus, say it with me, y'all. In Jesus, let him hear you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on and get a letter. All the have time to praise. Amen. Amen. That concludes our service. Amen. Please remember, if you if you must stay, if you must stay around, no hugging, no touching. Give air hugs. Speak from six feet away. Amen. We do have a have a um, stand. Have you desire to take a picture over here with your children? Just be safe and go along with the guidelines. Wear your mask. Amen. I know you haven't seen some of them in a long time. Amen. But wave at them. Amen. We're trying, to, we're trying to get where the Lord wants us to be. All right? So now let's look to the Lord for the benediction. Lord, we come and done as thou hast commanded. But yet we still find there's still room. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide for these our people now, even unto evermore. And we say together, amen. 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 Wave at somebody and tell them, God loves you, and so do I. Amen.